we've been singing psalms and hymns on spiritual conflict in the posts in Adullam's cave recently, and yesterday was a psalm that David wrote uh, in Adullam's cave uh, when he was being pursued by Saul. And today is the second psalm that is entitled uh, uh, by David when he was in a cave. Uh, and he was in great stress, under great stress and in great distress. He describes it really vividly here. It's like being surrounded by ferocious lions. And that was speaking figuratively of people whose words uh, against him were like lion's fangs, piercing him, wounding him, seeking to devour him. If David had lived in a day of uh, social media, uh, Saul would have been so manipulating uh, the the uh, social media that uh, um, uh, tweets and uh, blogs and messages would be going out that were uh, trying to destroy David's character and to uh, uh, disparage his motives and to bring him down. Of course, David had been a great celebrity in Israel after his defeat of Goliath and after the battles that he won he uh, was a great hero but Saul was determined to bring him down to zero and you can imagine the kind of gossip and uh, fake news if you want that was going around about him and was being brought back to David again and in his isolation as he listened to these reports how depressing and discouraging it must have been he was hurt he was deeply hurt by the words that others were speaking. It was like sore thrusts going into his soul. And he starts the psalm by crying out to God. He uses uh, this title in the psalm of God Most High, which is really, I think, vivid for us. He was in a cave. He could look up and he could see the ceiling of the cave, but he's crying out to God Most High, above whom there could be no one greater, higher than David, higher than the circumstances higher than his enemies, the one enthroned in heaven and sovereign over all earthly affairs. David was lifting up his eyes, not just to the hills, but to Yahweh, the maker of heaven and earth. And he's calling out in confidence that God will hear and act. And his confidence is based on the fact that God had made this covenant of grace with him and with true believers. It wasn't a covenant based on what David deserved or would ever deserve, but on God's mercy. He's calling out, he says, for mercy. Be merciful to me, O God. My voice calls to you for mercy. And uh, when we're in our cave and when we're uh, really in extreme need, that's always the place that we've got to start in prayer. Coming to the throne of grace, the throne, of course, of omnipotence, but coming to a throne because it's one of grace. We're always coming for mercy. We're always coming for the opposite of what we deserve, what we have no right to. Because if we came for what we deserved, we would only deserve judgment and condemnation. And so that's why David is so sure God is going to answer his prayer, because he's founding it on the mercy of God, on the covenant of grace. And he also goes on, in verse 2, built on that confidence in God's covenant to be confident that God will fulfill his purpose in David's life because it was by grace God had chosen David. It was by grace that he'd called David. It was by grace alone he would fulfill his purpose for David. And John Favell's wonderful book on the mystery of providence, which was a, a game changer in my life when I thought I was going to miss or it messed up on God's plan for me. It was based on this verse in verse uh, in this psalm in verse two. God who fulfills His purpose for me. This is a powerful defensive weapon against every enemy, human or satanic, to be able to make that confession of faith. God will fulfill His purpose for me. And why can David be so sure of it? Well, he goes on to say it's because. God will send out his love and his truth in which David is trusting. He's trusting God's infinite love, omnipotent love, and he's trusting God's word of promise. And that's so important because those are the two things that Satan 
tried to make David doubt and tries to make us doubt when we're in our cave, to doubt God's love and grace and to doubt his promises. And so he appeals to God and he's very specific. He appeals to God whose glory is above the heavens. God is reigning in the heavens and he asks God to manifest it on earth in this cave and uh, in the surrounding area. God, your glory is in heaven. You're enthroned in heaven. Exert that reign here on earth in my circumstances. And then he prays a really bold prayer that his enemies would fall into the traps that they had set for David. And the reason he gives is because God has destined the enemies to fall into the traps. He hasn't destined David to fall into the traps. He's destined David for a purpose that will serve the glory of God. But he's destined the enemies to fall into the traps they've laid for him. And so when they're setting those very traps, they don't realize that they're doing it under the providence and sovereignty of God that they themselves will fall into it. And so David prays that way. And we may pray that way, certainly about principalities and powers and demonic forces that are laying traps for us day by day. May they fall into the traps that they have set for us. And then he goes on uh, to rise even higher while he's still in his cave because he says, I'm determined, my heart is fixed because of already what I've already said, it's fixed to praise you here while I'm in this cave. I'm not going to mope and feel sorry for myself. I'm not going to have a pity party, but I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing during the night so that when dawn breaks, it'll find me singing. I'm going to wake the dawn up with my songs. And that's so significant because, of course, nighttime is the time when our thoughts are the most troubling and our doubts seem to be the most overwhelming. And he's saying that when the sun rises, it'll find me singing your praises. And of course, he, so he says, awake my instruments, awake my harp. Uh, come on, let's, let's start to sing, awake my tongue. Let's start to praise God. And uh, what David's saying here is what Paul was speaking about in Ephesians. He's talking about being filled with the Spirit. As we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs in our cave, when we're feeling isolated, depressed, discouraged, what we find is that we are filled with the Spirit, come under the Spirit's influence, and we find we have a completely different perspective on our situation as David had here. And David was as filled with the Spirit as he sang his psalms, as we can be filled with the Spirit as we sing David's psalms today. But then he goes even further and he says he's going to sing so that the peoples and the nations will hear his songs, which is extraordinary because he's in a cave, first of all. He's not even amongst the people of Israel when he's singing it. And yet he's, he's being so filled with the Spirit that prophetically he's saying this psalm and these psalms I'm writing are going to be sung not just by Jews, but by Gentiles around the world. And so they were. These were the psalms that Patrick sang with his gang of missionaries as they came to Ireland. They were the songs that they taught to the Irish converts. They were the songs that were sung here in Bangor, which was one of hundreds and hundreds of monastic schools. Bangor that had over 2,000 students that would sing through the whole of the psalms in the course of a week, singing day and night. These psalms, David in his cave was seeing people in Ireland, if you want, the, the far off corners, the ends of the earth, singing his psalms, singing this psalm when they were in their cave. And so I've uh, put this tune to, to this psalm. It blesses me. It's encouraged me so often when I've been in my cave and uh, it's stored up here in Adullam's cave and maybe sometime in the future, maybe not even in my lifetime, someone is going to come across it and uh, the tune might make it possible for them, perhaps in their cave, to sing this great psalm and to find themselves filled with the Spirit and lift it up to get a fresh perspective on their circumstances. <laughs> Merciful to me, O oh God, my 
with voice to you for mercy cries. My soul seeks refuge in you now. Under your protecting wings I hide. For refuge to their shadow fly. Destruction passes by To God most high I'm calling out And to almighty God appeal To God who will fulfill His plan for me his purpose is complete. From heaven he will help and save from those pursuing me today. God surely will his grace extend to his promise true my soul surrounded by fierce foes like hungry lions they'd consume with piercing words like fines they prowl like arrows sword thrusts through my soul. God be exalted over all, above the highest heavens reign. Over the earth your glory show, in answer to my prayer again. souls laid low a hidden net to trap my footsteps they have sent into the pit they've dug for me by you they've been destined to fall to sing this tune. Awake my instruments of praise, may daybreak waken to my song. Among the peoples I give thanks and praise to you, O Sovereign One. Yeah. Uh -huh.